it just you've had a career for the books a really solid legendary rise to success and you've remained at the top for such a long time now we're going to go on a journey of your career mm. but through music okay so technically like the ultimate soundtrack to the movie that is Idris Elba's life. Wow. So we're going back into the vaults because I've been around for a bit, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are. Are okay. you ready? I'm ready. I'm <laughs> totally ready. Acting's always fascinated me because I guess in a sense you're, you're learning how to be someone else. Mm. And what I've always wondered is, does that person that you have to pretend, I guess, in a way, or escape, and you have to be, does that ever leave you? Or do you think there's always a part of you or has there ever been a part of you that's kind of remained from a character that you've taken with you? Well, that's a great question, actually. Um, so I can say that, you know, in the early 2000, 2001, I got The Wire. Yeah. Okay. And I played a character who was a, you know, for all intents and purposes, a drug dealer who had a lot of ambition. Yo, you know what we got here? We got an elastic product. You know what that means? That means when people can go elsewhere and get their printing and copying done, they're going to do it. You acting like we got an inelastic product and we don't. Now, I want this to run like a true f***ing business. He wanted more than this. And he was like, why can't I get that? And I remember saying these lines and sort of absorbing Stringer Bell thinking, wow, actually... He's got a point, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's all good just, you know, running around and getting a little bit of money, but why not have it all if you've got the smarts to have that? So without a doubt, Stringer Bell sort of changed my, changed the, the, the sort of spectrum of my blinkers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it was like this and I just wanted to be nice, nice clothes or whatever, I got my daughter, feed my daughter, whatever. I saw like, wow, the opportunity mm. is bigger than just being an actor. There's a bigger opportunity. So that has definitely stuck with me. Wow. Yeah. And it's been, it's literally been 20 years. Yeah, man, I got, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, wow. And I was only two years old at the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, it's mad. Me too. <laughs> 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 Playing such an iconic role in The Wire is something fans of the show never forget, whether you're Avon, Marlo, Jimmy, Snoop, yourself, Stringer, and obviously Omar, played by Michael K. Williams. Last year, we lost one of these legendary cast members in Michael K. Williams. And I remember seeing floods of people saying the nicest things about interactions with him. And I know on screen you were enemies, but talk to me a bit about the camaraderie you had off camera. You know, essentially he's like a peer, you know what I mean? Like, he's one of the greatest actors ever, 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 ever. And obviously because my character and his character were pit against each other, we found ourselves like get working with each other and like everyone would be talking about, you know, Omar and Stringer and this mm -hmm. is going down and obviously what he did in, to my character. Um, so Michael K. Williams and I had, you know, a really strong bond as, 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 as colleagues, as actors, and then we would party a little bit. And then sadly for me, I haven't seen him for a very long time. I'd see him here and there. Um, and we would just laugh at each other like, wow, man, he's great. You know, like, rest, rest in peace, you know what I mean? So going back to The Wire quickly, I just want to touch on the fact that for a lot of us, that was the first show that was kind of showing drug culture, police departments, politics, and all of these deep-rooted issues and avenues around and that surrounded drug dealing. Mm. Um, back then, to be a part of that story, you probably did have to be in America, especially, particularly, I guess, with black casts. Whereas I feel like today, we have shows like Top Boy, mm. Gangs of London, you know, all of these shows that are providing opportunities for young actors to step in and tell these stories. And The Wire always surfaces as a reference mm. um, for shows like this to exist. How does it feel knowing that you're 100% part of that? And what do you think of Top Boy? First of all, um, I'm proud to see young uh, black writers, young uh, producers, storytellers telling stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, we have opportunities to tell stories that are not just, you know, looking at crime, yeah. looking at the underbelly of society there's mm -hmm. other opportunities but top boy hats off you know what I mean um, Kano is incredible Ash incredible you know what I'm saying it's good to see people getting great work I love seeing I love seeing rappers that can act do it I love it because yeah. people always say to me why are you doing music you're an actor but 
when I see rappers acting and they're killing it, yeah. hats off, you know? Well, Asha D actually had a question for you. Really? Yeah. My guy. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're joking. Yes, Idris, what are you saying? What are you saying, Ash? All right, listen, quick question, hypothetical one. If there was a next season of Top Boy and we're casting for Deshane's long-lost brother, <gasps> comes in the ends, got all the food, are you taking it or not? <laughs> Did I just get offered a point, a part in Top Boy? I think so. Live on radio? I think so. Live on my own radio show? Um... <laughs> Wow, Don't life is good. It, all right, it just cover. <laughs> um, wow. Do you know what? I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> and it, every actor that watches Top Boy is probably feeling the same. All right. When we watch it, you're like, boy, I can kill that. You know? I'd love <laughs> to be in that. Like, you do. <laughs> You'd love to be in it. Mm. Um, so, Ash, listen. Boy, it's very tempting. And you're my brethren and, and K2. So if there was a thing for me to come in and just dip in and out, I feel like I would be honoured to be a part of that. I'm being honest. I'd well, be there, honest. Well, there we go. There's your answer. Uh, only if you get a part as well. Well, there you go. <laughs> There's your answer. Now, you've already had a sensational triumph to your music career, uh, featuring on a Jay-Z album. Yeah. Uh, you've DJed at Glastonbury. Yeah. Prince Harry and Meghan's wedding. I did that. By as the well. way, what is the vibe of a, a Harry and Meghan wedding? Um, what tune was what tune was the one that got everyone going crazy? I want to dance with somebody. Of course. They went off on that tune. Yeah. Um what else was there? Um oh, um still, Dr. Dre. It's still Dre Day. Uh, AK uh, I've grown a lot, can't keep it home a lot Cause when I frequent the spots that I'm known to rock You hear the bass from the truck when I'm on the block Ladies, they pay homage What? what? Oh. Went off. Really? Yeah, yeah. it's Megan's I knew tunes. I liked them It's Megan's tunes, yeah, yeah I knew I liked them <laughs> I love that um, You've peppered releases around, you know, all of these other lives you have All of these other careers mm. Under the name Driss, King Driss But you're stepping into music in a very big way now Full name no gimmicks. No gimmicks. Idris Elba, not Calva. <laughs> what has made you decide to shift the focus from acting to music now? You know what? I think it's like been taken out of context. There's no shifting of focus because in a sense, I've been doing music all my life, as you know. But you know, the last two years, all of us got to a, a chance to just reassess who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we've probably made friends and probably lost friends. We've probably made new habits and lost old habits because you just you know the pandemic just changed everything and for me I, I i switched into music really heavily yeah i used to play the guitar i'd learned to play the guitar over this time period mm -hmm. and i just started writing a lot of songs and i really found comfort in being idris when i can write a bar or write something and it's about me and it comes from me and the creativity the fulfillment you get from the creativity is the same as walking onto set but it's you yeah. That was like the kicker for me. And, you know, it's not that I'm shifting my focus from it. I just want to put music out. I just want to be a lot more. And here's my thing about my music is that as an actor, I don't really play the same roles twice. Mm -hmm. And I don't really want to make the same song twice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if, if I have an album, it's going to be a chocolate box of songs because it's not. it can't be the same yeah. vibe, you know? I know that's off-putting for some people because you're like, oh, I like him when he raps, but I don't like him when he sings, or I don't like him when he raps, but I kind of like that vibe when he's just talking. Yeah. So I know that's going to be a difficult one, but listen, man, I'm, I just love music, so. So we're going to get a bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. And how is this project going? So far, so good, you know? It's a slow process. Actually, I was just in Jamaica and I did a whole writing session out there and I had... Honestly, I had 23 sessions, like, in, in, like, four days. And basically, it's just excavating ideas and and, and vibes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited about that for people because I, I really want to put a good album out that people can go, bruh, this is actually all right. Yeah. Now, your Daily Duffy broke the internet and was such a surprise to many people. <laughs> One of the biggest takeaways from it being the repetitive statement, because I can. <laughs> is there anything you can't do? Listen, the question is not what I can or can't do. The question is, is there anything that either of us, any of us can't, can't do? Like, mm. the, the point about Cause I Can is really not about me. I'm no different from you or anyone in this room. We all can. We all have the same operating system. It's just about just unblocking 
the kinks and doing it. Mm. And the other thing is, is like, you know, I can't do everything, but I'm prepared to try. I'm prepared to get better at it. And because, you know, as an actor, when you walk on a set, they'll be like, right, you're a sword... Uh, you're, you, you know, you, you, you're good with swords. You're like, oh, I have no idea about swords. <laughs> and they're like, so I want you to come in with the sword, hold it correctly, and then aim it. And that's all you have to do. And that is the process of me doing things. Like I've tried everything because when you, as an actor, you only have to look good for two seconds, <laughs> and you just have to really look good. But that application of making yourself look good is is literally as precise as the person that's been doing it for 15 years. Yeah, it's a bit of a hack. You get me? So I'm not saying that I'm, trust me, I love music and I've been writing rhymes all my life, but, and I don't think I'm the best at it, but I said, cause I can, because we all can. <laughs> we yeah. all can. Yeah. You could drop a proper 16. Honestly, no one wants to hear that firstly, but I could. <laughs> We're not going to do it today on this co-host. Um, no, I love that. And obviously, Listen, our DJ names just make sense. Do you know what I'm saying? Manifestors. Manifestors. 100%. I definitely manifested having this. You I definitely did. manifested you... having this show. Who would have thought a girl from Telford would have the rap show on Radio 1 and 1 Extra? Do you know what I'm saying? One of them. That. I love that. I love that. And on that note, we are coming to a close. There's this old saying, Jack of all trades, master of none. But mm. you've managed to master not one but multiple career paths, often at the same time. You're an actor, a musician, a director, DJ, producer, kickboxer, <laughs> the list goes on. What would be your take on that saying, given the fact that it doesn't seem to stifle you or your passions? Um, I, I think that, you know, the word master is such, such a like antiquated word, you know what I mean? It means, you know, it's sort of like superior level. But the truth is, you know, to get by in many, many things, you don't have to be a master. Mm -hmm. You just have to have integrity and you have to gangsterman. Gangsterman. <laughs> you have gangsterman in it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. And in true Luther fashion, now what? Now what? <laughs> what now, Alice? Yeah. That's not how I Luther. I don't even know why I'm doing it. That's what people do when they do my voice, but I just end up doing it. Now what? <laughs> 